Search for a home on any device, anytime, anywhere. Private property, a home for everyone. It's finally the weekend. We hope you've had a great week. My name is Danilo Aquisto and this is Winner Home. It is also South Africa's premier interior design reality competition, proudly brought to you by Private Property, where our three design duos have almost completed transforming three cluster homes from white box spaces into these lavish homes. Now, sadly, this journey is entering its final weeks and our design duos will soon have finished their homes. But before I start to get emotional, let's rather take a step back and see what happened last week. Previously on Winner Hope, the last day of the garden challenge was not sunshine and roses. Shut the front door. I know we're in the garden, but someone done broke a 16th, 18th century marble fireplace. And it got worse when one design duo got caught breaking a serious rule. Deadline was 5 p.m. Who gave you permission to decide to carry on doing work when deadline was done? With Team House and Leisure at risk of being disqualified, the judges' feedback was of utmost importance. Fortunately, they had high praise for all of the magnificent outdoor spaces, which had great functionality, artistic elements and water-wise plants. But only one design duo could win the biggest challenge reward yet. The winning design duo walking away with that 10,000 Rand added to their budget is... Bia and Brad Team Habitat. Going into the final challenge, there'll be no lounging around as our design duos enter the battle of the budget and stretch the last of their cash to finish their homes. Money, money, money. It's fast becoming a taboo word around our design duos and for very good reason. With the final space left to decorate, the last of the cash budget isn't looking too great for some of them. As last week's champions, Team Habitat got a healthy boost with that 10,000 Rand bonus from the Garden Challenge win, leaving them with 53,000 Rand. Team VC has 40,000 Rand left going into the final challenge and even with all of their saving on the garden, Team House and Leisure has only 36 6,500 to work with. That's not a huge amount considering the challenge. Contestants, I cannot believe it's come to this, the final challenge on Winner Home Season 4, before the judges arrive for their final verdict and that 100,000 Rand cash prize. I'm sad. <laughs> I'm sad. It's our last challenge. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm happy because now we can rest. No I'm happy no one cried through all, all the challenges. There's still a yet. There's still a yet. Oh, okay. We're not you done. Want to cry to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's been exciting going from one room to another room to another room and like, you know, just having ideas and planting them in. And now it's like, after this one, it's, you've been cut off! <laughs> so it's, it's nerve wracking, but it's also, it's a bit sad. It is sad. Like, it's like, what happens after this? <laughs> we wish the house had another room. <laughs> <laughs> the next and final room you'll be decorating is the entertainment epicenter of your home. It is, of course, your living room. You will have just 10 days to turn this space into a room that is not only beautifully designed, but also one that brings the entire home together. It's our last lap, and we want to pull this whole house together through the lounge. Absolutely. Um, it's the last chance to make an impression of any sort in terms of for the judges, for the public at home. So it's literally going to be that room that is spectacular like the other rooms, but in its own way. Toughest challenge because of the budget. The couches are expensive. Uh, Tables are expensive. I'm worried because of our budget. <laughs> I guess that's like my biggest concern now, because the couch that I want... <laughs> <laughs> it's above the budget. <laughs> Not even above, it's like double our budget. But so, you're not getting it, unfortunately. I know, <laughs> I even made peace with it. Contestants, that 100,000 Rand is so close. The pressure's on for the last time. Go forth and design. 
It's scary that it's the final room challenge and we've got so little to work from and I think this is the room where we're supposed to make the most impact and we've got 30,000 30, to make magic. And we'll make magic. As always. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Don't underestimate our intrepid design duos. The hard knocks that they've had during the competition have taught them some very valuable lessons, including how to stretch their budgets to achieve the stellar looks that they've created thus far. They've also made some great connections in the design world, leading to some awesome creative collaborations. Right now we're trying to find budget for couches. <laughs> <laughs> Because you can't have a couch without seating, or you can't have a lounge without seating. Mm. So it's quite so, important. So we're going to go from store to store and flutter these eyelashes. Sure. The first place Team Habitat goes to flutter those eyelashes is to the man who designed their kitchen chandelier for more extraordinary lighting. Sure, Stephen Pickett, by the grace of the design gods, is how we found him. He was sent from heaven. He really was because how he makes lighting and how we like to upcycle and we share a similar aesthetic in terms of design. Yes. Um, upcycling, social development. And taking things from nothing into something grand and just wow. There's so many products, waste products in the market where people don't really know what to do with them. I mean, these air filters, for example, nobody recycles them. You know, there's something in the uh, the process of turning something that's found, something that was discarded, to give it a second life, to make it something beautiful, maybe even more beautiful than it was originally. Yo, Stephen, so we've killed the kitchen. So now it's time for the lounge, the last challenge. Mm. So we're here for those track lights. Yeah, we want to bring that power into that lounge. That V8, V20, vroom, vroom <laughs> engine. So we kind of have some inspiration in terms of what the lounge looks like. We are thinking. Yeah, just a rough drawing of how we're going to place the furniture okay, in the lounge. So here's your coffee table. Yes. yes. And I think we'd want the lights to be over the coffee table. Yes. Yeah. To actually accent that okay. area. Yeah. Hence, we brought Simba along mm. for that extra row. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be the base of this coffee table. Mm. Hopefully rectangular or circular. Yeah, a glass on top of it. And then we want the lights to be above the coffee table. Yes. We don't know how. Maybe you can help us. I think we could mount a, a plate against the roof and then stagger, actually stagger the truck lights going down, maybe eight of them, almost in a spiral. And we could use finishes that would pick up some of color. A beautiful brass, copper, a nickel, silver, which would pick up the beads. We could do something stunning like that. Because also we want to do mirrors on the ceiling, so I think it's going to look awesome reflecting the light. Yeah, if we put the right bulbs in these truck lights, it throws a beautiful shadow, uh, almost a paisley shadow. Uh, which would be lovely, reflecting off the mirror and onto the glass of the table. Be beautiful. I mean, I can already hear that V8 engine roaring along with Simba mm. roaring. I mean, it's like a roll. And we just, Africa. We just need to get those judges to roll. And say yes. We had plus one spaces today. Uh, for color consultation. What we wanted to do in our lounge is we wanted to do something like this. Um, but we wanted to use warm, inviting colors. Because it is a lounge, we want people to sit and talk and enjoy the space without feeling like they need to leave. They must be comfortable. So I love these colors, the millionaire gold, the sticky toffee, and the dragon's hide. Mm -hmm. mm. As you can see, the millionaire gold is more of a mustardy color and it's from the bees, so which means it's a bright color. Mm -hmm. And then the sticky toffee is from the seeds as well, the dragon's heart. Those are more your calm colors, your rich tones. They make the environment feel cozy and nice. And sometimes when you use bright colors in one space, they become a bit too much for one to take. Okay. So we don't want that energy. So to tone it down a bit, I would suggest that you add the sea query as well as my, one of my favorite colors, which is called splinter. I do dark blue gray with a smudge of a green undertone, oh, which nice. can look quite amazing in that space. Now, we need help on how to execute these shapes. We want it to look clean and professional. We don't want it to be a mess. I see that you've got a half circle on yes. yours to get that beautiful half circle marked perfectly from the sticky toffee when, once we've painted the sticky toffee and it's dried completely, then we're gonna start masking out the circle. It's gonna be a process, it might take a few days, but to get this 
perfect. You have to do it one shape at a time or two shapes at a time because they're overlapping each other. Put your, your pencil mm -hmm. on the wall from the sticky tape and do a half circle on a board that you want, no matter the size that you want. Mm -hmm. And then from then on, you can create your own stencil to have the perfect circle for yourself. Awesome, that sounds like a plan. I'm excited to do this. Team House and Leisure meet with artist Heidi Furi and photographer Tatenda Chidora who are collaborating on different types of artwork for the living room. Tatenda and Heidi are showing us the printed images and also the techniques that they're trying to do. So it is the collage, the painting over and also the drafting film. And they're really trying to figure out which one will be the best effect. And since this is like Bonilla's field, I thought I should like sit back and let him do his thing because like I trust him, he's never disappointed before. We looked at a few photographs, some landscapes, some portraiture, and then Heidi and I decided to work with the portraits. We chose the portraits because they've got enough space for, for Heidi to paint on the sides or put a collage so there's enough space to incorporate her as well. We chose not to use the landscapes because they're way too busy. Yeah, I think the portraits specifically resonated with me. They're quite striking, so I, I think they can stand out in the room and they can be a, a very strong feature in the room. The one photograph has a floral arrangement on the model and it kind of, for me, it can communicate with the paint marks quite well. I'm, I'm, I'm quite excited. I'm a big fan of, of Heidi. So I, I'm really looking forward to see the, the color into the images, I mostly work a lot in black and white. So it would be good to have a different dimension in the images. And I think the textures and the exchange of the paint and even the different elements that will be placed into the image would look different. I really don't want to overpower your photographs with my painting, so I'm gonna try and keep it a bit mute. I'm not gonna go too crazy with the colors because it's quite serene and, and, and silent, so I don't want to overpower it with too much paint and too much marks and put too much over it. Do you agree with that? I do agree, and I definitely think it's going to be amazing. Working with Team HL is always a lot of fun because they, they, have, they have so much energy and they're excited with whatever we do, so they're not very fussy and they just let us, they trust us to do our thing, so it's very, it's very cool to work with them and they're, they're really happy people and quite exciting. There's just energy, so much laughter for, for one day, yeah. In another creative collaboration, the Habitat duo team up with Sally Chapman of Chapman Collection in designing a wallpaper for the corridor. Sally caught us at Design Joburg, spotted us and... And we, we just all fell in love with each other. We loved her work, she loved my hairdo, she loved your style. <laughs> we just loved each other and we were, Sally, can you do anything for us for the house? And we decided on that passage. The way you spoke about the animals, I really feel that the gold and the silver would go perfectly. So what I did is I then sketched it and then I just lay it out on a piece of tracing paper, slightly bigger, and start staggering them just to see if the pattern will work. And as I started laying him out, he really looked fantastic. We might not have had time to say, Amanda, Amanda, mentor, what do you think? It had to just be decided on the spot because she was flying from Cape Town. She plonked it on the wall. And it's not sorry. It had to happen. And it actually did something for that corridor. It made that corridor grand, exclusive. And just and come alive, as opposed to what it was before. Mm. If there's one thing that we at Winner Home are most proud of, it's that our design viewers have showcased local design in some fantastic ways throughout the homes that they've decorated. It's a beautiful celebration of South African talent. And guess what? you could be calling one of them your home. The Winner Home Grand Prize competition will soon make one lucky viewer a homeowner at the Eye of Africa Golf and Residential Estate. The winner will choose one of the homes decorated by our design duos, valued at over three million rand, with luxurious finishes by Plascon and Caesarstone, top quality bathroom fixtures by Gibberton Grower, and premier appliances by Grundig. To enter, simply visit privateproperty.co.za and vote for your favorite design 
video, you only have until the closing date of 29 October. So make sure that you get those entries in as soon as possible. You can enter once a day, every single day, and it's also an automatic entry into the bi-weekly giveaway. And speaking of which, I'll be announcing our most recent prize winner, as well as announcing what prize is up next directly after these. Because if it doesn't improve people's lives, it isn't Plascon. Plascon. Designed for life. Welcome back to your weekend Kickstarter with us on Winner Home on Afternoon Express. And thanks so much for the tweets that have been coming through. Loving reading all of your comments. Now, our bi-weekly giveaways have been an incredible array of sought-after prizes. And you can still get in the running to be a winner. First, however, we must congratulate Tsepo Mohotsi from Midrand. Because, hold on to your seat, you're the winner of the Grundig Black Glass Door Combi Fridge worth 899. Congratulations. Our bi-weekly giveaways aren't done yet and our last prize is a beauty. Courtesy of Caesarstone, we're giving away a KitchenAid mixer worth 10,000 Rand. So when you enter our grand prize competition at privateproperty.co.za, you're also automatically entered into that bi-weekly giveaway. So enter right now and in fact every single day before the competition closes to get as many entries in as possible to stand in line to win. Now, our design duos have had an exciting journey so far in the competition, and they've grown along the way with the help and guidance from their magazine mentors. So with this being the final challenge, the final meetings are really bittersweet. We hope it's not going to be the last time. No, it can never be the last time. I mean, as long as you buy a fashion magazine, now we know the editor. <laughs> so no, it's not the last time. Yay! Oh, well are. done! <laughs> On winning the gold, that's fantastic. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you. Now we're going for the big one. I the mean, overall the win. overall <laughs> win. <laughs> and we're not going to stop. There's no stopping now. There's no stopping. Ain't no stopping us now. <laughs> that's right. And so what are we doing for the lounge? Show me your sure. ideas. So now with the lounge, obviously now we've already taken some of the space away with this dining room. Yes. So we thought of creating somewhat of a partition to create a privacy for the lounge space. What kind of partitioning are you thinking of using? So you see, that's where we're that's debating. That's where we're debating. How do we... Because we're thinking something of this structure, like a wooden structure that literally starts from the ground and goes up and into the wall. And you could use the pillars of the partitioning to put shelves in. That might be quite a nice idea, um, to put the odd objet on a shelf. Make it a bit more interesting and less stock. Otherwise, we can sort the pillars here, next to the... The actual island. island. That's what so we don't suggested. lose this space. Because we've already made the lounge quite small. So I don't think it's a good idea to start from here. You'd have to just... I think you must start further in. So you have a gap here? Yeah, so when you get up from this chair, you know, and you want to go to the garden, you mm. just try to lie. Otherwise, it's going to be a bit cluttered. Do you think you might incorporate Caesar stone in the lounge area? Yeah, so we really want to optimize on the Caesar stone off cuts, unless, of course, we can rip that one off the wall and put it somewhere in the lounge. I mean, we have to bring it in the lounge. Oh, so no, you do. You like, do it's indeed. huge. It's yeah. huge. I think you need to bring some color into the space. Not a multitude of colours, maybe just one colour, which you could possibly do with using artwork. That's so nice. Definitely. Like, you know. And then the artwork and the upholstery of the furniture yes. could possibly also be. We just need to find a collectible piece that, you know, once you step it on the wall, <laughs> it's ma'am, it's Van Gogh. <laughs> <laughs> if I could find Van Gogh right now, I'd dial him. <laughs> what are you doing with the lighting? <laughs> what are we doing with the lighting? Team Chandelier! <laughs> well, no, I think for this time around, we're using Stephen Pickers again okay. for our lights, just to carry on the theme of the razzle. But not the chandelier, repeat it over there. No, no going he's going to do track lights. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You're going for more of an industrial look with the lighting for the lounge area. Complete contrast to the chandelier. Do we have a winning combination? Yes! Let's yes. win again! Yes! yes. <laughs> no, we're taking it. And all of them. <laughs> We are going to re-train today. Meeting with 
Larushka. Richmond has everything from mm. retro mid-century pieces all the way to like modern pieces. Oh wow! This is nice. How awesome is the store? Great shop, eh? I'm I so glad you brought this. me here. Mm. So Anna Marie, you know that we already bought our L-shaped couch and we're looking for a... A chair. A lounge chair to go with that beautiful couch. Mm. And we want it obviously to be very comfortable, but we want it to be a unique piece. And that's why we're here at Retrend, because they have beautiful retro mid-century pieces, and I think they'd be absolutely unique and beautiful for our space. So we were looking at this piece over here, and we quite like it. Without the scatter cushion? Maybe without the scatter cushion. <laughs> and always look at the foot. Mm. Mm. The foot is the most important thing because that is what says I have personality. Correct. We want to continue going with the, with the concrete jungle theme throughout the house. Clever. So I think maybe this occasional chair will play a big role with our wine rack, our wall unit there, and also the carpet. Yes, so we have um, the rug which was meant to be used in our master bedroom, but now we've decided to use it. Yes, we've decided to use it in um, the lounge, and I think because it's got those beautiful, delicious monsters on them, it's gonna bring a beautiful pop. And I think all of that put together is gonna be lovely. You've obviously been here before, so show me what you were looking at, and we'll choose one. Anna Marie loves their shop more than, <laughs> really? more than anyone loves anything. Um, if you wanna learn about history of furniture, how things work in a space. I think Richard will be the, the right space for you today. Oh, this couch is so comfortable. Listen, huh? tell me what you think. You look like you're gonna fall asleep in that couch. <laughs> it's so comfortable. <laughs> yeah, I love the color of this couch. Mm -hmm. It looks absolutely amazing. The, the upholstery is beautiful. Do you think this is the one? I'm not quite sure about it. Lavishka, what do you think? Do you have Hello guys. Oh. Hi, how are you? We love this chair, but I don't think it would fit for us. So do you have any recommendations for us? If you're looking for an occasional chair, I've got some other possibilities at our other shop around the corner. We've got the Grafton Everest that will give you a more relaxed feel, more very informal, very loungy kind of chair. 70s look, if that's the look you're gonna go for, very mid-century retro. The other pair that I can show you is late 50s, 60s. That will give you also a relaxed feel, but more of a formal, occasional chair. That sounds like a plan. Let's go. Do it. Anna Marie, go. I'm taking this. <laughs> <laughs> Around the corner, Team VC and Anna Marie find some armchair choices that will add distinction and personality to the lounge. Anna Marie, look what we found. I am in love with this chair. First of all, I feel like it's more formal. I know you fell for the deep buttoning detail. Well, this chair is nice, but when I came into Retrend, I fell in love with the gold chair, which is totally nice. I mean, look at this. Oh, tell me if I'm lying. I'm with you. I'm with you. When I walked past the shop, I saw that and I thought, did they see it? <laughs> and the fabric is also comfortable. Fabulous. Yeah, I could fall asleep <laughs> you here. You closing your eyes. Oh. <laughs> Did you see the leg? Oh, the legs are completely amazing. Only one leg, that's what makes it special. But here's the question, can you afford it? I think I can, we can. I'll even sell the Seho for this. <laughs> You're gonna sell me? <laughs> I guess I'm sold. <laughs> Selling me off, no, like a slave. No, I didn't sell you off. For a chair, a chair. Not even a Maserati, challenge. not even a, a no, chair. It's worth it for the challenge. <laughs> While a chair comes between Team VC, Team Habitat is literally putting up a wall. Luckily, there's no drama, just a partition. The idea with the partitions. If you've ever heard Beyonce's, let me build a partition, babe. <laughs> it's all about partitions, just to create spaces that are somewhat divided but open. We like a place with adventure, and with the partitions, I actually think it makes the place look bigger. Absolutely. Rather than going open plan. 
Yeah, it just makes a lounge a lounge, a kitchen a kitchen. You need partitions. It's and, like, and there's storage in our partitions, so we're maximizing on that. It's like going on a first date, you don't want to show the guy everything. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> not. You Especially if you didn't do your dishes. Yeah, you want to keep some things hidden. Absolutely. The mystery. It's funny that Team Habitat mentions keeping some things under wraps, as they often do precisely that with their designs, revealing these huge surprise additions when their spaces are complete. Now, will they do the same with their lounge? Let us know what you think by following Winner Home on social media and using that hashtag Winner Home to share your thoughts with us on those living room designs. Still ahead, the design duos hit that home stretch as they get stretching those budgets. Because if it doesn't improve people's lives, it isn't Plascon. Plascon. Designed for life. It's the final countdown. Welcome back to Win a Home on Afternoon Express. And knowing that this is their final challenge, Team House and Leisure has decided to display as much personality as possible in the living room. And for some truly unique pieces, they're visiting one of the country's most cutting edge design studios. We're going to Dr. and Mrs. because we actually had been following the designs in the past and we thought that would be fitting for our aesthetic and also something quite different and playful and that's what we're looking for, especially for the lounge. And again, seeing their work at Decorex, their collaboration with Caesar Stone, we thought that was beautiful. It'll be really nice to have one or two of their pieces in our space. What do you think of this one? It is lovely. I love that it's very sculptural and then uh, it'll blend in with the whole theme of introducing artworks to the space. I really like it. Yeah, and you're not worried that we might not be able to put anything on it? Mm -mm. Don't worry it at all. <laughs> <laughs> you like it? <laughs> Another one. Thoughts on this one? I love the height. I love that you can utilize the, like, the entire space on top of it. Yeah, unfortunately, the colour, I don't yeah. think it'll work, especially for the world colour we have. And don't you think it's a bit outdoorsy as well? Okay, let's go and look at the rest. Yes, we go. Ta -da 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 -da. <laughs> what do you think of this one? I think it's very traditional. I love the shape and size, but it's safe. Yeah, compared to the rest that we've seen, I feel like this is safe. So, let's, let's go. go. Yes. So guys, have you decided which mirror to go for? Yes, so we actually um, we have circular mirrors in the house and we're okay. trying to break away from that trend. Okay. Is there something you have for us? Okay, so the first one I have for you is the Lotus uh, mirror. It's based uh, behind a, a flower design. As you can see, it's got a really nice funky frame and it has a powder coated base. Here at Dr. Mrs, we like to do a lot of funky stuff and unconventional designs. And I've got a couple more items to show you as well. We've got the beveled edges. Uh, which is the mirror B. It's a very classic design. We've made it into some different shapes as well. And I've got the tri mirror that I want to show you in the other room. So if you guys can come with me. Love to see it. Right. So we're looking for a different shape that will complement the space, but also be ahead of the trends, the current trends. This is the tri mirror, guys. Do you like it? We love, we love it. it. Yes. And not only do you want one, we want two of them. Great. I'm going to ring it up just now for you guys. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. <laughs> We are a bit sad that we are meeting with Tian for the last time. It is like now sinking in that like the competition is approaching the end. Yes, and also it's with Tian, I think we've got a great relationship with him that it feels as even after the competition, we'd still be able to reach out to him and ask for help. So obviously the garden was last week and I got some feedback that there was a bit of challenging, scary moments, last minute moments, things going haywire. So what was the final result? How did it go? 
would like to say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure yes. there's been a few things. A few things, yes. yes. Um, so it was the styling number one. Yeah. It didn't happen on time because our minds were still waiting on the coffee table. Learning from the outdoor challenge, what are you going to do this time around inside that's going to wow the judges? Designer pieces. <laughs> And another thing, throughout the house we've been using like softer colours, so we're trying to introduce much bolder colours now. For the lounge area, from the kitchen running into the lounge, we opted for like a Caribbean current. And then on the two passages, we're going to be going with a Ruby Boss, because like we feel like as you walk into the house, it'll contrast nicely with the lounge. And then with the interior, especially with the couches, we're thinking of these colours and because we've got very bright walls we want to keep it neutral so we have the materials that will just soften the space and then at the back of the chairs because you can still see the back we'd like to add detail so that when you walk in you can see all the colors mm, we came to dr and mrs because we saw that they have like quite striking pieces and then we've been looking at quite a few coffee tables we'll begin like a coffee table from them and mirrors and well there's and a UFO coffee table on the other side that we saw and well I feel like it's quite bold, very sculptural and it'll be like a statement piece in the lounge area. And then there's a soldier and then yeah what's nice about the soldier is the size and the height and then option three will be the penguin. So we thought maybe you would advise us like as to which one would work well better. I think the UFO is a better option for that room. It's sculptural, it's going to anchor the space um, and it's going to create a talking point, a focal point in that space that's needed in a lounge. Good luck guys, there's obviously a lot that still needs to be done, um, but I think the room's going to come together beautifully. We're meeting Melissa and Harrod. It's always exciting <laughs> meeting with them because their stone is amazing. It's just too beautiful. Absolutely. It's just to, I don't know, get them it's on board. On board with our ideas. Hi guys. Hi. Hi. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you too. Oh, Thank guys, you for meeting with us. And you can see we've brought along our off cats. <laughs> we didn't want to waste a scrap of it. Not a single Fantastic. bit of There's quite a bit left. Yeah. yeah. What have you guys got in mind? We're working on the lounge area. Mm. So with the off cats that we have, we wanted you guys to advise us on what's possible to be made you know, from the off cuts that we've kept. The fantastic thing with Caesar Stone is you can literally use every single little piece of it. It is so versatile. I mean, you could be making small little tabletops for occasional tables. We could possibly pop in a couple of floating shelves with what you've got left. That's true at the bar. Yes, yes. that's correct. You know, you yeah. got it. You can even have a couple of little platters so you can serve some sushi around mm. the bar. On Caesar Stone. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. So really, really versatile. Plenty we can do with it. Sure. What so, do you have in mind? Well, so far, when you look at this, is the a sketch of the layout. So we've got the lounge area here. And then this is the area that's like we, what we want to convert into the bar. A little social area in the lounge, yes. bar top, a cabinet maybe for your drinks. Because the space is very limited. It's like 800 across, but we're going to make a little table, 600, that you can go around it to get to the cabinets mm. and, the, and the cocktails. But I think a, a big factor here is the space, like you said. I mean, you also, yes. you also don't want to make it too small. True. If you sit with a 600 table, I mean, it's basically just you gonna sit, two, two people gonna sit there. Oh, and that, no, that's <laughs> not much of a social gathering. Yeah. <laughs> so, we have to have a look at the space and then we can, we can see and plan it from there, maybe. Okay. I agree with Herat. Um, I think we need to use the Caesar Stone in a practical way. I think the space is a little bit small for a bar, actual seating bar area. My thoughts is to possibly build a nice little drinks cabinet. Uh, with some shelving at the back with some nice colourful bottles. You can then serve your drinks in the drinks cabinet, take them through to your lounge area and serve them on a couple of small little Caesar stone tables. It's amazing that you can use the Caesar stone not just for countertops but for furniture as well. And because it's so hard wearing it can be used in a number of different applications and guys don't forget it carries a lifetime warranty. Harash, I must ask, I know this is a tall ask, but we've got one more slab that's sitting in the guest bedroom that's not really optimizing on its value that I'd need you to somehow miraculously yank it off the wall and we make it into something really spectacular. You must be kidding me. 
Sure. Unfortunately, okay. I don't have any more jokes left in this Look. last lab. <laughs> to be honest, we will get it off. But you're going to have a lot of damage onto your walls, your plaster, your paint. Might even damage a stone. So, what do you guys want to use it for? It's like a goodie bag sitting right at the back of the house that we want to bring somewhat to the front of the house and to the lounges and the kitchen and just find a new purpose for it. Okay. Yeah, we found that putting it on the wall wasn't the best. One of our best ideas. ideas. You know, it was our first film and we were still learning how to yes, okay. use Caesar Stone properly. Mm. Guys, I will do it, but you must know one thing, the risk is on you, eh? Okay, no, we accept all the risk. If it breaks into <laughs> some pieces, we'll make sure those pieces are used up. And guys, I want to see some good practical use of the slab. I'm going to go through all of this effort of taking it off the wall, then let's turn it into something phenomenal, because that's what Caesar Stone is all about. Right from the start, Team Habitat have adopted an off-the-wall approach to design, and we hope that the same will be true for their slab of Caesar Stone. Listen, after the break, we get some advice on estate property financing, so stay right where you are. Partnership with Winner Home. The best stone is Caesar Stone. Search for a home on any device, anytime, anywhere. Private property, a home for everyone. Welcome back to Winner Home on Afternoon Express, exclusively on SABC3. Private property has stuck to its promise of providing us with advice on the different aspects of property on estates. Joining us in the loft today is Lepoy Mohatle. Uh, she's head of home loans digital at Nedbank, and she's going to chat to us about how to finance property on an estate. Welcome to our loft. Thanks for having me. So let's first start with why estates are becoming so popular. Are you guys seeing on your home loan digital platforms, are people applying for loans to move on to estates? I would say yes. Um, we've seen far more um, home loan applications for um, development loans, which is your um, residential estate living loans, and your vacant lands, as well as your building loans. So I think it's also because of the accessibility and the convenience of it all. Yeah. You know, um, a lot of these home loan applications are coming from your um, first time home buyers, but mostly couples. So people who are starting a family or mm. whose family is getting a bit bigger, they're moving into that estate living purely to have access to certain schools that yeah. are in the estate. And of course, I mean, the, the convenience of having your gym and a restaurant and the spa all in one space just makes it absolutely ideal. Deal. So there's a lot for us to understand there. I mean, there are three different ways that one can buy on estates and almost get them loaned for. Am I understanding that correctly? Yes, you're correct. Okay. So essentially, there are three different ways. The first is to get a vacant land bond. So that is just to acquire the land where there's no building on it and okay. then perhaps build at a later stage. Because you can get a tent if you're really poor and you can, like, like me, I can buy the land, but I can't buy the home, so I'm just going to build a tent. Absolutely, Done. absolutely. And then the second option is to get the land as well as a building package at the same time. Okay. So that's what we often term as a building loan, um, and it comes almost like a plot and plan as well. Okay. I'll tell a little bit about that later. And then the last way is if there is an already existing property that you have your eye on in a particular state, then you just buy it as a normal home loan. Okay, amazing. Mm. And then what about sectional titles? Because I mean, a lot of people are trying to buy into sectional titles. They like mm. the sort of affordability of it all. Mm -hmm. um, they understand that as a sort of plug and play kind of system that they yes. like. Um, is there a different way to finance those? Um, that's actually a very good question. So sectional titles are really accessible, you're right. Um, and particularly Particularly in places like Gauteng and the Western Cape, um, where you've got uh, urban areas like Cape Town and Johannesburg, it's quite ideal um, for, for clients who want to apply. Sectional titles, um, there isn't really a different way of applying for a home loan for a sectional title, but just be aware of the fact that it's part of your shared use. So you don't just buy the building on its own, you're buying the opportunity to actually share in some of the 
amenities yeah. that are around it, I That's guess. Yeah. It, yes. So the idea that behind <laughs> buying an intersectional title is that you avoid the transfer duty? No, not necessarily. Oh. So if you're buying a fully completed building or unit within a sectional title and you're buying it from an existing seller, then transfer duties will apply. Okay. However, if you're buying it directly from the developer, then there will be no transfer duties. Ooh, so find these deals soon while these developers are building these new plots, buy in early so that all these uh, sort of duties get avoided and you get to save yourself a bit of money. Absolutely. And the developers have really great packages um, that they can offer to customers and the banks can actually facilitate that as well. Stunning. Mm. Now you mentioned you wanted to expand a bit more on, on, on building and, mm. and those kinds of loans because mm. that's a very specialized way of, 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 of loaning from a bank yes. uh, to build. H yes. How does that work? Um, so building loans work slightly differently to your normal home loan in the sense that the bank does not pay out the money at once upon registration. So what usually happens is You'll come to us as a bank and say, I'd like to apply for a home loan, but I want to build on it, so I don't have a complete building yet. Okay. Um, the bank will say, yes, you're good for it. Um, and then once the bond registers, they will start making what we call progress payments. And they pay out as and when the building gets completed. So, for example, your builder will have started the foundations, for example, yeah. and then the bank will issue a first drawdown of those payments. And then when the builder gets to, for example, window level, then another progress payment goes out up until I that see. building is completely finished and you as the client are happy with it. Okay, let's just quickly ask you something that's slightly off, off, the, off mm. the books a little bit, but I mean, when you're trying to buy on an estate, uh, do banks look into where you're trying to build this property or buy the property as a way of affording a bond or, or to build or is it purely just about the person that's going to be paying it off? So we look largely at the individual, so um, what your previous credit behavior was like, how you pay your, your debts, how mm. you service your, your income versus your expenses. Um, but we do also look at the area in which you want to buy okay. property. So we'll look at things like, is it close to certain schools or parks? Um, is there a functioning sewage system, which would surprise you a lot of the time, sometimes there I'm isn't. Sure. <laughs> um, so those are some of the things that we look at, okay. yes. So buying on the right kinds of estates could also help you in that process too, which is awesome. So Absolutely, yes. Um, the bank has um, very good relationships with a lot of the developers. Um, so they would do due diligence with the various developers and um, make sure that the development caters for suitable lending. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you. As a new time and a sort of young person trying to enter into that buying uh, mm. of the property market, I've learned a lot from you today. So thank you very much. It's my pleasure. Sure. Well, there you have it. The lowdown on how to finance your dream property on an estate. The other option is, of course, to win your dream home, no finance needed. And you can only do that if you enter the Winner Home Grand Prize Competition on the private property website, in which you stand a chance to win one of the multi-million rand homes currently being finished by the design duos on the Eye of Africa estate. All you have to do is log on to privateproperty.co.za, click on that Winner Home logo and answer a very easy question. Now it's time for us to take a quick break. When we return, it's time for those duos to stop lounging about. It's good to have you back with us on Winner Home on Afternoon Express on this chilled Friday afternoon. There are no couch potatoes allowed in this challenge as our design duos plunge all their energy and passion into the all-important lounge space. Let us know what you guys think of their efforts on social media using the hashtag Winner Home while I pay our design duos a visit. Team Habitat needed to add one final flourish of their audacious design and the lounge will showcase their knack for functionality combined with unexpected design style choices. Sure, it's the halfway mark of the final challenge and Team Razzle Dazzle seem to be making some good progress. How's it going? It's going, but there's a lot more to get going on. A lot. This lounge is the last challenge in the competition. I mean, what was your initial vision for the space? The most important vision was to join all the rooms together. And we wanted to create a maze situation. So when you walk in, it's not only a kitchen, dining room, lounge, but they're all separated somehow. Yes, yes. and intricately designed so that they create interesting, I guess, focal points in each room. Last time you guys served me a milkshake, but apparently by the end of this lounge uh, challenge, I'll be served something slightly stronger. Oh yeah. my, absolutely, <laughs> in the Caesar Stone Bar! So okay. we're gonna, in that corner, we're gonna have a fully Caesar Stone Bar. 
and it's gonna look amazing with the Sally Chapman wallpaper. But there's a story behind that. Isn't there a story behind how you had to get that Caesar stone into that bar? Sure, you know that I had <laughs> to go back and then bring it to the future. So we went back to our guest bedroom and pulled that Caesar stone on the wall, off the wall to be cut into the bar. At the moment, I'm seeing a lot of wood, a lot of neutrals. Where's the razzle dazzle? Mm. <laughs> That's on the way. We're definitely getting some razzle and dazzle. dazzle. Yes, mirrors are going up. We've got mirrors coming up on the ceilings, the pillars. So that's going to be a oh, dazzling. Ooh, and you've so. heard about our table. It's <laughs> Nyla the Lion. So it's oh. quite a stat, like it's a statement piece. Please don't say there's going to be any more uh, grass, like uh, fake grass or fake plants. Mm. <laughs> Honey. Uh, I don't think I want to know, guys. Just get it done and dusted. And remember the feedback from the judges from last time. Even though you won the last challenge, the details are the most important thing for you guys. So make sure it's spick, span, neat, and let's win the final challenge. Absolutely. Good luck, you two. Thank, Thank you. you. Get back Thank to work. <laughs> for their lounge, Team VC want to create a space that oozes sophistication but can still be relaxing. So their vision includes big pops of colour but where is it? Okay, so it seems like Team VC are maximizing space and taking minimalism really seriously. Yes and no. Okay. <laughs> so stuff is still coming, I hope. Yes, yeah. there's quite a few things that need to come in here, but we do have it all on site. We're just waiting for the painting to be finalized. Okay. And um, then we can start putting in our beautiful pieces and our lovely paint technique. That is still loading, yes. Now you've mentioned your paint technique. Paint a vision for me of what it's going to look like. Well, on our wall, we want to play with geometric shapes. So we're going to use squares and blocks in different colors and in different positions, mm. which gives you something beautiful to look at as you're lounging around. And it's definitely a conversational piece. One other thing I've noticed is your mirror over here. And they're great assets to try and make a space look bigger. So how are you going to use mirrors in the home? We're going to put the meters on the, on the wall in order to reflect our wine rack because if we're going to have a wine rack and we're also going to use the meter to create like a double volume type of space to reflect you when you are standing in the kitchen. I cannot wait to see the space just unfold into this magic concrete jungle lounge. Can't wait for you to see it. Yes! Team House and Leisure have had a stressful time in the last few challenges but with the lounge they're giving the space loads of character and they're having a ton of fun. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the game show of Team House and Leisure. The game is called... Pick a Box! Yeah. Inside each box is a grand prize. Let's see what we've got. <laughs> oh, cool, guys. I like these. What are they? Uh, they are pendants and also microphones. And you can use it as a mug as well. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure that no kids can live in this house because it would be a disaster. <laughs> I don't think so. Those are great. <laughs> so you guys have got a lot of colour going on in the space. I'm seeing three different light pendants. I'm seeing green walls, red walls, white walls, yellow walls. I feel like I should wear glasses. <laughs> <laughs> no, Danilo. <laughs> what we tried to do is go bold this time around. Because in our past rooms, we've been a bit too muted. So we thought, like, what's the worst thing that can happen? Let's splash that plasma colour. We could lose. <laughs> <laughs> the lounge is the final challenge on Winner Home. So this space needs to really wow the judges because it'll tie everything together. Now, what are the factors in here that you're hoping that they'll notice? We're going very minimal, so it's going to be like this. How is this minimal? <laughs> <laughs> no, um, so I think the judges will notice the designer pieces, which are very unique in the sense that it's not store-bought pieces. Um, we selected each item very carefully and curated well for the space. Well, you two look very chilled. The space is looking nice and vibrant. One thing remains... Get back to work! <laughs> so far, so good. But these duos better work, work, work. Because next week, you and I are going to want to see some fresh, dynamic lounges that still have that element of coziness we all love. Best you be in your lounge and in front of your televisions next week, Friday at 4 p.m., where our judges decide the winners of the final challenge. Also, remember that you've only got until Sunday, the 29th of October, to enter to stand a chance to win your choice of one of the three decorated homes. Just visit private property.co.za, click on that Winner Home logo, and you can enter every day to maximize your chances of being our grand prize winner. I'll see you again next week, same time, same place, 4 p.m. on SABC3. All that's left for me to say is...
Good night. Search for a home on any device, anytime, anywhere. Private property, a home for everyone. Express, made with love by Clover. Another feel-good production.